We are live! Hello, Hi. everyone. <laughs> Welcome to The Show Must Go On Line. Today's guest is Harrison Bryan. How are you doing to today? I'm great. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> that jacket is maybe one of the best things I've seen all Hanukkah. <laughs> Thank you. It's so I feel great. So honored. It's so great. I'm jealous. I'm honestly jealous. It's a. Uh, oh wait. But wait. There's more. Of course there is. With so, that jacket, there has to be more. There has to be. So you can also opt for a tie if that's. <laughs> All I brought today was my Hanukkah, Hanukkah mask. I love it. Your, your Hanukkah mask and your Hanukkah musical. So don't sell yourself short. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm here. I remember now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I I wish I actually knew how to tie a tie. Maybe I don't know if that makes it too extra, but <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to try and explain it over Zoom. If I was there, I would do it for you. <laughs> Could you imagine this episode of the show must go online is now just about Hanukkah and tying ties. Glad you tuned in. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining. Um, for any repeat viewers, you'll see a dog that, that comes in and out of screen. That is Slimbo. He is my co-star, and he is my puppy for Hanukkah. <laughs> you got a puppy for Hanukkah. Very good. <laughs> yes, I, when I heard that song, thank you, David Diggs, for yet another Hanukkah anthem, which we have so many of. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're just trying to add more to the canon, you know, we're trying to bring it to the forefront of people's consciousness. And yeah, I was really grateful for that song too. Uh, really just kicked off my Hanukkah in a way like we got to get our stuff out there. There's a lot of good Hanukkah stuff that's happening. We want to be a part of that list. Exactly. Well, so this is a perfect segue as we love to do here on the series, because you, my wonderful friend, have, are the book and original concept human of a Hanukkah Carol or Gelt Trip, the musical. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I, I play the air horns. Uh, yes, uh, A Hanukkah Carol or Gelt Trip, the musical is an irreverent, joyous, kosher spin on the Dickens classic that takes place in our world today. There's the dreidel. And... Uh, and it, it, you know, it, it, it fills all of my, my musical theater favorites. And, you know, it's got like flavors of Mel Brooks, of Avenue Q, of South Park, of Fiddler on the Roof, because, yeah. Um, and, uh, and we're really excited to uh, hopefully bring it into the world as soon as Hanukkah 2021. Yes. I am so excited about it. Yeah, I have props galore. When you said spin, this is per I truly this <laughs> you, you are getting the full effect of my love of Hanukkah. Hanukkah. So I feel like we're really seeing you. I feel like this is what you do all, all year round. And when Hanukkah comes out, you're like, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> See me. Well, wow. Well, I'm excited oh that God. you're excited about our musical because I am over the moon excited. This is like it means so much to me and my family and me as a human. It's just this show encapsulates all of it. Yes. And we will talk about your family and your wonderful Hanukkah house. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. So, okay, let's let's dive deep first into the musical of it all. Diving deep. Slimbo, are you ready? Should we start with the trailer or do you want to say anything else before we do that? Sure, just a little, I mean, just a little bit. Um, so I came up with a, an original concept to turn the Dickens Christmas Carol into a contemporary Jewish spinned, irreverent musical uh, uh, idea. And then I've collaborated with Rob Berliner and Aaron Kenny, who are my lyrics and uh, my music. And together we sort of... Uh, jumped, tuned this it, this crazy idea to life. And we weren't able to, you know, put it on a stage this year because of the pandemic, but we wanted a way to illustrate how colorful and fun and vibrant and alive and, and, and pushy this show can be. And so all of us are huge fans of animation as a creative medium. And we thought, wow, like what if this show could exist in an animated world? And uh, the response we've gotten is just tremendous. And we're not saying 
it's just a stage play. We're not saying it's just an animated movie musical, but we're excited to explore all options. And we found an incredible company off of uh, the Upwork site to help us animate and bring it to life. And we're so pumped to share it because we really think it, it really uh, shares us very well. Yes. What a great intro to this. So everyone, we are going to play this. And I have to say, I've watched it like, I would say five times, but probably 10 times is more honest. It's so much fun. It brings you so much joy. And I love that there's this aspect that it has a life in so many different forms that it could be you know, on a stage or it could be via this. And especially in 2020 in quarantine, like having the option, having like these animated characters who are just like adorable and amazing. It's such a great touch, a great yeah. touch. <laughs> so we are going to try something that I have never done before. I tested it earlier, but we are going to share the screen, which on Zoom is something that everyone does. But here on StreamYard, we like to try things out. So wow. it's our first um, share screen. This is a yeah. this could be a Hanukkah miracle in itself. We are experiencing so many Hanukkah miracles, which, you know, I feel like if I didn't say this right now, then it would be bad. So I need to give this like quick little uh, note. We have been having some technical difficulties. There have been some storms coming through the area and we just want you to stay with us. If at any point in today's video broadcast, the signal just drops and it looks like we are away. We'll be back. <laughs> You'll be back come and join us just stay right where you are so you know hanukkah miracles are why we are here it I, is why i heard your happening. wi-fi was only supposed to last one day and it's lasted eight so here we are let's get eight it on this crazy eight day. nights <laughs> <laughs> all righty let's go do, do, do. we are opening this up yes love this Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum. Oh, wow, we get to really see the share screen here. <laughs> okay. <gasps> this is very cool. This is all happening. Um, we're not, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Oh, this is, no. This is very exciting. Are you not? Oh, here. Maybe this? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, everyone. This is cool. This is cool. Hey, this is, this is, um, do you, you don't hear it at all? We hear it. But you don't see it. I am seeing, you know what it is? I am seeing your, uh, the thing where like your, your finder as opposed to the actual video. So I think when you share screen, it should give you options. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's this is this is fascinating. Do you see this? No. <laughs> oh no. I'm so curious. I, it's so weird. I, I clicked on it and it it's not having it. So hold on. Stop oh it's us again. Hello everyone. Oh. Um, Star spreading. <laughs> the news. Well, I'll just I'll sing you the whole trailer. Thank, that's so thoughtful of you. I, wow. Um, this I wonder is if I can do it. So interesting. Do you think I can do it? I mean, we can try. Oh, hold oh, on. Oh, go to application window. Yeah. No, that's where I was, but now it's actually. Oh, no, wait, I see it. I see it. Rewind it. We're spoilers. Hey. This is so oh. exciting. We did it. Now it's going to feel even better. <laughs> Stand by, everyone. Are you ready? In three, two. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Would you like to hear? Uh, no, Alexa, off. Oh, God, you're so fucking needy. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, you're going to be haunted by a tree spirit. 
I think um, I think, and if anybody wants to uh, see it on their own time, uh, it, you know, not through some interrupted internet, maybe higher quality sound, you check out our YouTube page and go to ahanukacarol.com. Uh, that's H A N U K K A H. Um, also, we also have the domain a Christmas Carol for Jews .com, in case that is easier to spell. <laughs> A Christmas Carol for Jews. This is there. There's so many points to talk about. First of all, how did you choose which spelling of Hanukkah to go with? Wow, that's actually uh, it's one of my favorite scenes in the musical. We have two parents who kind of dissect the correct spelling of it. Um, for for me, you know, I was I was raised uh, in a in a pretty reformed Jewish home and so the h just sort of felt natural although you know it's funny sometimes my sometimes my family will pronounce it with an h but spell it with a ch <laughs> and um you know i think for us it was just a matter of uh what felt most natural i'll also say this i believe this is still true that um autocorrect will autocorrect it to the way we spell it so <laughs> Part of it is that. Amazing. Yeah, I I love even in the notes of this uh, this video that we're even chatting on, I like to spell it so many different ways and you caught a hot auto correct of my own. So thank yeah. you so much. No, no, it's fine. I mean, look, no matter how you spell it, the meaning of the holiday is the same. Look, I am. Yes. So I loved, especially at the end, uh, she used the, the the extra phlegm, as I like to say, in the Bach humbug. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> yes. Well, that actually comes, I, I played, uh, true story, I played Ebenezer Scrooge in my seventh grade production of A Christmas Carol. And I thought it would be funny to change Dickens a little bit and say humbug. And uh, a lot of people made fun of me for it. And I just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. So when I'm writing a, a kosher Christmas carol, I thought, oh, well, here's a nice place for it to exist and really exist. Um, and uh, and that's just one of the many uh, influences of Dickens that we've subverted to create this spoof, satire, uh, parody. I mean, all of it. Yes. Oh, that is that is perfect. I So tell us more about like the origin stories. What's your origin story? How'd you get into theater and theater writing and bring us up to today? Sure. So I, um, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, uh, and I saw my first Broadway show when I was four or something ridiculous. And, you know, it's just always been a part. My mom was uh, a, a theater minor, uh, a double major. Oh man, she's gonna be so mad at me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she loved theater. She brought it into our home at such an early, wonderful age. And um, you know, I went to Boston University. I studied acting, and I'm, you know, I'm still, still definitely uh, an actor, writer, puppeteer, producer, theater artist. I, a lot of hyphens in what I want to do with my life. And I grew up, and my sister grew up, truly believing that the Hanukkah fairy 
was was real. I mean, that was our Santa Claus it, through and through. I would wake up as a four-year-old, five-year-old, even six, eh, a little into my seven-year-old self. And we would wake up and the house would be decorated with, with dreidels and blue and white streamers and blue and white lights. I mean, it looked like, my house looked like your suit jacket across the board. Um, and, and we thought it was the Hanukkah fairy decorating. And it wasn't until uh, I was around seven or eight or something that my, my sister told me, my older sister told me the truth, that it was our parents. And, you know, I know a lot of people experience disappointment when they find out Santa's not real. I was just impressed. I was like, I could not believe that my parents put that much energy and effort into making the holiday something special and large for us growing up. And so I'm very fortunate to have them in my life. And I think the seed of this musical started there and then when um, I equated Hanukkah as the most important holiday in December. <laughs> and it's not a contest with Christmas. There's no, there's no, there's no war on Christmas happening here. It's just, come on y'all. Yeah, it's very clear. It's not, it's, it's just about um, having a seat at the holiday table that feels important and special uh, mm -hmm. and about embracing this Jewish identity amidst a large majority of, of other cultures and experiences. And so one day, you know, fast forward from the Hanukkah fairy moment onwards, uh, one day in the winter of 2018, I was a part of a 24 hour play festival and it was a, it was a, it was a holiday themed festival. And I had 24 hours, which really means I only had about nine hours to write a play. And over the course of a dinner table with my family celebrating Hanukkah, we had discussed, has anyone ever done a Hanukkah carol? And then, and then I was like, can I do a Hanukkah carol in 10 minutes? Because <laughs> you only had 10 minutes to write this play. And I just did. And it wasn't 10 minutes. It was about 22 with laughs. And, and, uh, and, and it really just like took off from there because once I saw it and once I heard like that amount of laughter and support and surprise that this didn't exist before, I was like, wow. And I've always wanted to write a musical. Uh, like I'm a huge fan of musical theater and, um, you know, South Park is such a huge influence in my life and they are musical theater lovers as well in a very roundabout way. And um, I've always wanted to write a musical, but I am not as, I'm not super musically gifted. And uh, I found these, I uh, found two collaborators who were really interested in the Hanukkah Carol as a short play and said, this could be a musical. And the second I heard that, there was no, there was no hearing anything else. I was like, this is, this is the musical I was born to write. It's going to make my, my family so happy. <laughs> um, my Bubby is gonna, you know, go cry. My Bubby is actually in this trailer. Is that She's the one, the, the Maka Bubby. She's the spirit. <laughs> the Maka Bubby. <laughs> the Maka Bubby. She's the spirit of Hanukkah past. And I sat down with my grandma, uh, my Bubby at her, at her dinner table. And I just said, I need you to go. Kya! And she did it for about, I got her to do it about like nine different takes, like maybe more, honestly. And she's incredible. I mean, I think that's where the acting comes from in the family. I was like, wow, yeah. this is so committed. Uh, anyway, it's going to make a lot of people really proud. It's going to make, um, it's gonna, it just has made me so connected to the holiday and my relationship with my family and my relationship to the arts uh, because having a creative outlet to explore something that's never been explored is such a gift. And Hanukkah is, is a holiday about gift giving. So there it is, that's the origin. Thank you so much for this wonderful gift. I feel, I feel so lucky that as a Jewish girl from New York, oh, what? So crazy. <laughs> um, and a theater reporter that, <laughs> that I would have this musical to go to. Like honestly, for years, you could pretty much count on one hand how many Jewish musically related songs there were. So we've got like Adam Sandler, obviously epic. Thank you, thank you so much. Eight Beautiful. Crazy Nights, gotta, gotta listen to all four versions every year. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got the Maccabee, you know, of course. Sure. Classic, classic. Now David Diggs. Puppy for Hanukkah, Slimbo approves, don't you, bud? Yes. And now you, like this is, it's really fantastic company to be in. Well, we, you know, it, it, we, for me, it's like I've, I've sat down 
and have seen more than I like to say that I I've seen more adaptations of a Christmas Carol than years I've been alive. Right. I mean, it's, it's crazy how, how often it's done. And yet we still fall in love with the story again and again. And when I sat down to basically adapt it for my own, my own, ex, my own experiences, my own, you know, uh, cultural beliefs. Um, I found that the translation wasn't so far apart. A, a Christmas Carol's not really even about Christmas, right? It, it's it's, a, it, it's about someone with a flaw and an emotional blockage that gets explored and on the other side of it finds the value in kindness. That is a story that is worth telling no matter who you are or or what you are or where you are in this world. And so um, that was really exciting to find that, yes, it is a Jewish story. Yes, it stems from the the fiddler on the roof culture and the, the nods to, to Klezmer and the nods to Mel Brooks. Like, yes, there is a Jewish blood that beats through the veins of this musical, but it transcends that in the same way that Christmas Carol does. And that's that's just so exciting to me. <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting for sure. And the reception has been outstanding. So can you talk a little bit about what it's been like hearing all this feedback and like this TikTok culture of it all has really been beneficial? It's crazy. It's it's crazy. Like we put on a little bit of the trailer and in less than 24 hours, that trailer got something like 40,000 views and uh, like five or 10,000 likes already. I mean, it's, it's uh, really cool to just see people react so immediately to something that we've been sitting on for over a year. You know, we've wanted, oh, we've, yeah. we're, we're sitting on, on this material for over a year and we didn't know if we would have any chance at all to share it this year. And even the little TikTok buzz has been super fun. It's just fun to see people as in not only Jewish people, <laughs> you know, we have a, we have a bunch of comments on our page. that's like, I'm not even Jewish and I would pay to see this. <laughs> and we're like, great. Yeah, please pay us to see this. Um, you know, and so we think that, that it appeals to a lot of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It appeals to a lot of people and a lot of generations, you know, it's gonna, I think we're, you know, we are of the the millennial age and and the the connectivity and the contemporary style of both the show <laughs> is going to relate to them and then the older generation i think is going to relate to it too because um there are so many nods to the greats that uh, were before us and all of the good feels of a broadway musical i think are a part of our show as well 100%. Uh, I could totally hear the last thing you were saying um, because Slim over here, uh, Slim, you need to go run around and I think I'm going to let let him out. Stand by. Feel free to just, you know, talk amongst Slim yourself. Is, Slim is excited about the prospect of a Hanukkah musical. That's what it is. It's so true. Come on, oh my man. God, I love that. I love that you <laughs> open the door and put a beam of joyful light pierces through. Gonna do that. I'm gonna move. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna do a set change. Yeah. Set change. So we're gonna do that. And actually, I mentioned this earlier, but we get a different type of set change here. Hey. Uh, it's a menorah. <laughs> <laughs> now it matches mine. There we go. Yes, it's perfect. It's perfect. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so that's great. I do want to give a shout out. If you are watching live, then you can feel free to comment along. I see one of my show trions, Judy, over here commenting. Thank you so much. Judy saying, uh, <laughs> commented on the tie. Thank you so much. And the different spelling confuses me. I didn't want to offend anyone. And I think that's actually such a great point is, at least for me, I can't speak for Jews everywhere, but for me, um, it, it really depends on, like everyone has their own thing and I'm never offended if you want to learn more. I just call it an education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you know we're learning we're learning too we're learning too about things. I mean, the the show in many ways follows uh, Chava, who is 
like a, a social media uh, attached narcissist. Uh, a, and we are now now applying ourselves into the social media world. I mean, you talk about the TikTok stuff, you know, we find ourselves now looking down and we're like, whoa, like we're just got tens of thousands of likes and we're getting sucked in too. And I think it's, I think it's very easy to judge our central character um, about, you know, the, the power trip that can happen when you're getting so yeah. much attention. And so Scrooge had greed. Hava, our main character, our Scrooge, um, has narcissism and selfishness. And the, the weaves of social media in and out of the show uh, is happening in real time with us as well. So we're connecting on a different level now, too. That is such a great point because during quarantine, it's so hard not to spend so much more time than you even normally would because you're here, you're on your computer, you're on your phone. It's just like, you're not going anywhere or else. Like, I mean, unless if you're working or whatever you have to do, you shouldn't be going anywhere, but that's a different story. Right. Um, a quick question. Yeah. Are you are you playing the video also on your end, like on YouTube? Am I playing the video also on no. my end on YouTube? No. Sometimes you that happens. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback, which you know what? Could just be this connection issue. And if that's what's happening, that's life. Look, I am. Hold on. Maybe if I put you in my ear. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, you tell How me. How does it sound? That sounds great. Cool. Let's roll with it. That sounds great. I think you'll be able to hear me now better too. Win-win. <laughs> but in that... <laughs> oh, please. No, what were you going to say? Oh, no. I, I, I was just saying more of that, like, it's um, a lot of people here, a Hanukkah carol, and I think immediately just uh, assume that we we took Dickens' show and just put Jewish themes on top of it. It was really important to make it about our times now and what yeah. we can do in an age where we have the ability to share ourselves so quickly um, to so many different people, how we choose to share ourselves and what we choose to share, uh, I think is like a really important message to our time. And that is why setting it today and using the themes of Dickens today uh, makes it a universal story right now. And, mm. and I think that's, that's just, it's just important to share. Cause I feel like sometimes I, I talk about the idea of a Hanukkah carol and people love the, like the niche of it or the shtick of it. Yeah. And, and we think while the irreverence and the humor is going to, is like the heart of it, there's also a huge heart of it. And we want people to know that too. I love that. It, it really does speak to modernizing something modern and Jew, Jewanizing, Judaismizing. Yeah. I'm make it yeah, kind of right. make it happen. Sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, having the the combo that like the relatable aspect, both I think anytime a minority, a group of minorities that don't normally see their themselves portrayed, that's like one aspect. But then even people who aren't Jewish um, can also relate because it's a modern story and we're all dealing with this whole social media thing and like. How important is a like or reshare? Like, yes, it's really helpful for promoting. And like, especially like I said in this thing at the end, like we're gonna make sure you can self-promote as much as you like. <laughs> but then like, you know, if you think about it too much, then like, what does a thousand mean versus 10,000? Because at that point you're just like looking and looking. Right, and also how am I presenting myself between the difference between a thousand and 10,000? Our character in our show becomes a totally different person and loses sight of who she was before the, 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 the internet fame, before the buzz. And so she had to experience a Hanukkah past and appreciate Hanukkah present and fear a Hanukkah future to relearn what it is to really be herself and share that with her following. Mm. I love that. This is this is so exciting. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to to watch this in more capacities and and also just a side note that even though you said, you know, we didn't know if we'd get any uh, feedback or anyone have the ability to see it this year because of the pandemic, 
you know, if there's any bright spot, not that we would wish this, but you do get this instant feedback through TikTok and social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it may be, that if you were planning this for a stage show, you might hold back and you wouldn't have had the animation and you wouldn't have had that. Who's to say? Maybe you would have, but it, it just like, this is also a time for expanding new creativity because we have to. Yeah, I think it's really important to, I mean, this is like so embedded in the world of Hanukkah, but it's like, it's really important to appreciate what you have and make the most of the opportunity that you are given. And for us, the year was really about solidifying and strengthening the material so that um, we have it in a place where it feels ready to be shared. And, um, and we think we've done a really good job this year of doing that. And we're just excited to do that. We are so excited all around. So what? Let we'll ch chat a little bit more about Hanukkah, and then I want to get a little bit more into like you and your other work because it's you know this is a this is yeah, a fun time. Right. He's the day. Uh, so yeah. ha do you have any other fun Hanukkah traditions? Any you know it's eighth night of Hanukkah. It's the grand finale. <laughs> I know. Well, I will say sometimes my my family doesn't uh totally just stick to eight nights like if there are extra gifts we'll do a ninth we'll do a tenth we'll do an eleventh we'll go all the way to christmas sometimes if hanukkah's too early because like right. we just want to who, who who wants to take down the decorations um so you Not know me. it's snowing right now you know and we've got like a beautiful thing out in the front we have a lawn we have a hanukkah house type of thing we've got a couple of inflatables we've got you know a, a <laughs> We've got a, like an eight foot inflatable dreidel outside and a Hanukkah bear. We have a mench on a bench. Mench um, on a bench. Yeah, as seen on Shark Tank. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, uh, for us, like the, those, like the traditions of impressing our neighbors with an increasingly larger Hanukkah display, uh, that's something that, that exists in my family for sure. And, and sometimes, you know, I remember one year my, my parents were having a tough time at work, I think, and they were coming home late and I took it upon myself to go to the 99 cent store and buy some blue and white lights and just put it on the, uh, put it outside our house. And so that when they came home, there was something to brighten their day, uh, literally. And, and at that moment, I remember so specifically because I could see in their experience of their child that they had done something good. <laughs> like it was like, it was like, Oh, and maybe that's, what Hanukkah is about, right? Maybe that it's about taking a moment to think about what's going to make someone else happy and just doing it because it's, it's a good thing to do. And, yeah. uh, and so, so that, um, of course there's like, you know, there's, um, <laughs> uh, I think in college there was some, uh, marijuana celebrations, <laughs> um, that maybe took place, uh, which is day. of course uh, it's another theme of the show is, uh, Hava it takes a hit of too much kosher kush and goes on her 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 trip, uh, the gelt trip to experience what she needs to experience. Um, you know, and uh, and then of course there's the really fun moments where Hanukkah falls on Christmas and and we get that incredible experience where, you know, I'm I'm dating a goy right now and uh, her birthday is like right next to Christmas, and there's just like that that moment to celebrate, and we haven't had a lot of things to celebrate this year. Right. So I think we're all eager to connect on a deeper level and and really share the holiday cheer. We love a Christmaka. Oh, a Christmaska, and uh, uh, we'll have to wait until I think two thousand and seventy for the next Thanksgivinga, which is that was Thanksgiving and Hanukkah. Yeah, I think we have to wait until twenty seventy. So buckle up. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, the the classic Hana Kwanzaa Christmaka was some, <laughs> something along that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The, I mean, and the merchandise for the show really sells itself. You know. Um, you know, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Judy's saying, "I want pictures." So on your YouTube channel, there's this amazing interview and story. Talk about that because I want. I want her to be able to see it and anyone who's watching now or in Hanukkah future uh, can see this. Yeah, I mean, we definitely want as many people to go to uh, a Hanukkah Carol's YouTube page. 
um, because you can check out all of our, our our current releases and sneak peeks. But we also have, yes, we have a, a news feature done on my family uh, from Brooklyn 12 News. <laughs> and Brooklyn 12 came with their cameraman and they just wanted to um, hear my mom's story of how this Hanukkah decoration tradition started. And she... Done. She <laughs> absolutely, and she does a great job of telling that story because um, Doggy, uh, she does a great job of telling that story because it actually started around when I was six when I when I started realizing the Hanukkah fairy was a, a figment of my imagination, and I had asked my mom why there was not enough why or any Hanukkah decorations flowing over the Avenue U and a lot of the streets in Brooklyn. And she, using my words and my questions, wrote a letter to the New York Post. And the year after, they actually put up Hanukkah decorations. Um, and that little seed of asking a question and seeing the change as a result of the question is a part of our musical and a part of like my uh, relationship with my family. And so, yes, please go to our YouTube page and watch that. It's only like a 90 second clip. It's a feel good Hanukkah story. And the news people were so excited to interview Mench on a bench. Uh, they really had a great time. As a former local news reporter, I appreciated that so much. <laughs> <laughs> they were so nice. And honestly, we've actually watched a lot of Brooklyn 12 since. And we're doing yeah. our best. It's like really unbiased. It's like really well delivered news with less commercials. I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> Local news, it's where it's at. <laughs> Uh, Slim just loves the local news. That's where we really connected on a deeper level here. So <laughs> um, why don't you tell us more about um, your puppetry and, and that other work? And I'm gonna mute myself so the good folks at home can hear you and not Slim welcoming that's, our newest guest. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, so obviously I'm writing this Hanukkah Carol musical and trying to get it seen by the right people and and to help us along on top of that yeah i'm, I'm an actor and uh i i've uh, been recently nominated for a helen hayes award i did a, a couple of productions of curious incident of the dog in the nighttime which i'm super proud of with a lot of super talented incredible uh directors and, and designers and castmates um and then yeah I, you know I, I saw avenue q when i was 11. Uh, my parents thought it was just a regular puppet show and it totally, totally changed my life and has informed so much of my sense of humor and my love for puppetry. So I have worked for the Ronald McDonald House and have done puppetry work in and around there. And I've also been in a production of Avenue Q and Hand to God and all of like my favorite puppet experiences uh, have, have really come to uh, fruition for me and including a couple of short films that, uh, about puppetry and things like that. So uh, for me, the puppets are just such a tangible way of expressing the miracle of theater, which is to create uh, something in your imagination, bring it to life and believe that it's real. And nothing I think does that better than puppetry. I mean, it's, and we actually, I've embraced that in a lot of my writing. So I'm writing this, but I've, I've written um, a few other plays, a few short plays, longer plays, um, working on a few musicals. And uh, this musical also has embraced some puppetry, I think. Uh, and of course, that'll be, you know, colored by the designers and the direction team and seeing where it goes. Uh, if it is and when it is a stage play, I think you'll definitely see some puppets. Uh, and even if it's even if it's filmed, I think puppets will sneak into a lot of things I do. Uh, I'm writing a Pokemon musical as well. Um, and that's going to be a lot of DIY puppets. You know, like a bunch of, you know, silly mops with googly eyes. And I just I just love when it, when I'm in an audience and I'm watching something that feels like I could be a part of or that I even that I want to be a part of, which was my initial gut reaction when I saw him in UQ. That was the first time as an audience member I sat there and I said, oh, my God, I can do this and I want to do this and I have to do this. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to write. That's what the experience I want audience members to have. Um, and that's the kind of artistry that I, I dream of creating. Uh, and that's, 
that's me. <laughs> you, can, you can go to my website. I've got a website. Uh, <laughs> Harrisonbryan.com, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, and it's it's such a fun website and it's very well put together. Easy to to see all the different aspects. Well, of your you know, life. I feel it's thank you because I feel like sometimes when I'm wearing all of these hyphens, as a lot of us theater creatives have to do now, um, it is hard to organize it and and say I'm this, but I'm also this, but I'm also this, and not feel like you're doing too much. Like I want to believe that if a human being can juggle three balls successfully. An artist can do that with the different avenues of artistry, and uh, I'd like to think that I'm I'm just following in the footsteps of other hyphenated creatives who I and I'm inspired by. Don't just limit yourself to Avenue Q. Find what <laughs> other avenues go your way. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I like that. I like that too much. <laughs> Feel free to use it. This is my Hanukkah gift to you. <laughs> wow. That's it. It'll be on my website now. And you'll be like, oh, I wrote his website. Yeah, right. <laughs> Contributed by <laughs> BYU. <-Show. laughs> I love Avenue Q. I listen to it all the time. I actually went to their final performance at New World Stages. Wait, and I, I, I probably saw you there. No way. Yeah, me and my lyricist and co-book writer, Rob, were in that audience. And... Uh, yeah. Oh my God. That, what an amazing experience, right? Oh my gosh. That was so special. And then I got to cover, like I covered it. I filmed the curtain call and then I interviewed them afterwards. Go check that out on BeWayShow.com. That's immediately what I'm doing after we hang up. That's incredible. I have, I have brought my app because I was just about to do a regional production of Avenue Q and I brought my script with me and I got Rick, Rick Lyon to, to, to yes. sign my script. And he drew, he drew an illustration of Trekkie monster in my script. It was like the best. And I brought a puppet. We took pictures. I mean, I was on cloud freaking nine with that. I loved it. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that yeah. was, it. you know, it's such a fun family. And like everyone who's gone through has just been like grateful to be a part of that experience. Because who could have ever thought or known that it would have. No. And we are so inspired. And I'm inspired, and I, I think I'm speaking for my collaborators, Rob and Aaron, when I say this, that we're so inspired by that story because, you know, Avenue Q starts as like, oh, what a really cute idea. And then it just, it grew because of the, the strength and heart of that material and then the niche and the, and the, the way that it, 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 it universalizes every experience in that show and sustains its kind of rated R comedy you know, and yet it feels like a family show. Right. And that's exactly what we're going for with a Hanukkah Carol. We know it's edgy. We know that the characters might curse a little bit too much, but at the end of the day, that a family does that. Right. And and I think we're so inspired by that story and, and that's the kind of heart tones that we're trying to hit with ours as well. Mm, that is, that's perfect. Yeah, I feel like, that show works so well because it notices like what that edge is and it like calls it out. But then it's like, you should also experience what this is. So we're going to, we're going to be self-aware about it and we're going to say it and we're going to like be, have a little conversation with each other and with you at the same time. Right. They never forget that the audience is experiencing this with them. And, you know, also, I, I mean, in terms of like where it all begins, uh, that show started with writers in the BMI musical theater writing uh, uh, program. And my two songwriters are also in the BMI writing program, you know, wow. and and it's sort of uh, it's sort of incredible to sort of to imagine following those footsteps. But um, they're all we're all learning from the same people. We're all in the same network of thinkers and 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 writers and uh, writers typers um <laughs> and uh and so that that connection we're very aware of and uh, it's really cool to be to be in the footsteps of greatness in that way that is so neat i i love hearing all these connections and it's funny i interviewed fergie l philippe from hamilton and he is also super into puppetry like if you don't you you should definitely like chat and uh, <laughs> Do we have a visitor? We're showing the the Rick Lyon autograph here. Yes! Oh, that's awesome! Wow! That was the, that was the spirit of Hanukkah present, just offering 
a, a gift right there. That's my Hanukkah fairy. Um, yeah, 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 a hundred percent. And actually, I saw you also uh, interviewed uh, Emily Battle, I believe. Yes. So she, she was in um, a, a, a very initial table read that we did last year of a Hanukkah Carol or Gel Trip the musical. Wow. And I, you know, she speaks about her experience as a, as a, as a, as a black Jew in America. And, uh, you know, our, our, we also want, um, to, to show the variety of, Jew, of Jewishness, not just in, you know, the culture of Jews, but in race of Jews as well. And, uh, that's an exciting part of, of, of what we hope could exist on a stage as well. This year, especially, you know, I've had some conversations with Jewish friends and friends of all all kinds, but especially within the Jewish community, because like growing up and I feel like you might feel the same way, like I feel like a Jewish poster child, right? <laughs> I mean, you certainly dress like one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can't tell by the hair and some facial features, let the jacket speak for itself. <laughs> but really, like it's. I, I've been, I went to a Jewish sleepaway camp. Like I I was very involved with like my temple growing up and then Hillel and then like even back in New York when we're not in quarantine. And like, I love, I, I live with my grandma, my bubby and we celebrate Shabbat every Friday night. And like, yeah. you know, it's, it's so fun to expand my Jewish knowledge. But so much of that this year was speaking with Emily and, you know, uh, as we said with Puppy for Hanukkah, like David having a wonderful song like that isn't just great because it's David Diggs and it's a great song, but it also speaks to the representation in that we in our own community, in our own culture, need to do a better job of making sure everyone feels welcomed and that you don't have to look exactly what we think Jewish people look like because Jewish people look like everything and everyone. Right. I think that's I think that's right on. And I think there's something really interesting about Jewishness as a culture and not always as a religion, you know, that that, you know, in many ways. And I say this about Christmas Carol also like it, nobody is experiencing Christmas Carol really through their relationship with their Lord Jesus Christ. I think that in the same way that Hanukkah is celebrated as a December holiday, it's about experiencing it in relationship to the traditions, in relationship to your family, and yeah. the togetherness that happens in the culture that is separate from my faith in God or whatever that is, whatever God is for whoever it needs to be. And I'm I'm learning. I learned a lot from Emily also about 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 that because I feel like even in growing up in Brooklyn. I also had my own idea of what a, of a Jewish person yeah. is. And, and I have been on the other side of it too, where I have a friend who grew up in South Dakota. And at, I think at 21, I was the first Jewish person he had ever met in his life. And he, you know, of course he said something like, but you don't seem Jewish. And I was, and that was the first time I was like, oh, what do I seem? Because I never, I never thought about it. And putting Hanukkah in the in the mainstream of the conversation during a time where everybody is talking about what it means to be a family um, in this country is like the whole point of actually writing a, a Jewish mainstream Broadway musical for Hanukkah, <laughs> you know. So I think that I think it's so it feels so cool that I feel like <laughs> there's that I'm writing something that's not only really funny to me but maybe important. Um, and I don't get to say that on everything I work on. So it's really, it's really cool to, to do that. It's something that you should feel really proud of because we don't all get this opportunity to combine what we're passionate about, but also speak to something more important and let other people who maybe didn't have a way of expressing their feelings, but they like they had them somewhere, but they didn't mm. know how to express it. Now they can see a show. Now they can sing the song and they can share it with their family or their friends and be like, hey, you know how I was telling you about this? Why don't you listen to this? And now you'll get a better understanding. Yeah. And hopefully laugh through it as well. You know, like, I, and that's the kind of that's the kind of art that I, I liked, right? I, I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're lectured. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're going to a, a a political event or a rally. Like this is not what we're doing. We're we're entertainers. But while we're while we're entertaining, 
let's let's exist as a, as a human entity and experience something that means something you know uh it's uh my 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 songwriting duo like like to coin the phrase that they're um uh nutritional junk food is what we serve <laughs> and yeah. i think that's so neat i think that's so neat I'm a big fan of that, a big fan. So I want to make sure um, we have about 10 minutes left. So we, this is great. The time just flies right by. <laughs> so we have a song, a second song that we're going to play. And we're going to talk about your favorite uh, nonprofits and charities. So due to my technical skills, why don't you in your brain get that ready? And I'm going to attempt to play our second uh, performance here. Everybody stand by. That's right. Da, da, da. So, da, da, yeah, da. This, is, uh, this is A Light in the Dark. This happens in a sequence of Hanukkah past. Uh, in the show, she experiences it with her uh, childhood best friend, and they sing a sort of karaoke track version of it in trying to impress their families for the holiday. But here we've put pop vocalists and Broadway stars into uh, what would be the fictional Jewish boy band, Boys to Mensch. <laughs> and, and we've attached it in a lyric video. For her, so I hope you enjoy. We sure will. Let's take it away. Yes. There it is. That's the t-shirt. Yes. yes, and uh, 
And, you know, we're hoping that this is a staple in the Hanukkah canon of music for years to come. Please, if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and family. Uh, it, it really is so bop. It's such a bop. It's, so it's such a bop. It's such a bop. People got to be singing this song. I mean, this is the song that we leave the audience. We're going to throw bar mitzvah gifts into the audience. This is our mega mix. I mean, we... We have such big dreams for this for this song, for this show. And please, if you enjoyed it, please go share it now. I, I think you can tell, but the whole time I'm just like <laughs> smiling. I'm bopping along the I want to Maccabee with you. It's just like chef's kiss. Yes. And that's, uh, that's Rob Berliner on lyrics. That's Aaron Kenny on music and uh, a ton more incredible talented artists uh, joined forces to make that track. And we are so thankful that they did because it's, it's so darn good. <laughs> it really, really is. Yeah. It just, just to take a moment to really compliment you. Like sometimes people have a, a cool idea or like this, it would be a fun thing. And then you see it and you're like, good effort. I loved what you tried there, but this is so good like I was bopping along to it I was like singing it in my head as I was making coffee this morning like really <laughs> really catchy great and and then that's only you know that's only one song of the entire soundtrack and the soundtrack um really is an eclectic mix of genres and styles and and tempos and I mean really it's it's not about hitting every demographic it's about like what do the, what does the character need to sound like right now to express what they're expressing? And so the influence of music in this show is, you know, Britney Spears, reggae, hard rock, um, lullaby, fiddler on the roof. Uh, it's it's uh, it's everywhere. And hopefully it, it'll keep surprising you. You know, I don't think you'll be lulled into any one sound. The show will continuously surprise you with a different genre when you least expect it. And that's that's fun. It's just fun. That really, really is. So let's take a moment and why don't you highlight as many nonprofits as <laughs> you'd like to right now? <laughs> That's so kind of you. Um, for I, I just want to really uh, uh, mention two real, real quick that I, I feel very uh, personally connected to. Um, one is the Michael Vincent Rosen Pipitone Foundation or the MVRP Foundation. Michael was a dear friend of mine uh, in high school and he uh, passed away too soon. And his family has done a tremendous job of offering scholarships and support to young artists, uh, young artists dealing with mental health as as uh, as as much as they need, as much as they can help. They do um, they do marathons uh, to raise money, and they're so incredible. And they're dear friends of mine who, uh, and I know Michael, especially Michael, would love. The idea of an animated movie musical that could be a Hanukkah Carol. He would love it on stage too. He was so great at, at character voices and he was so great at punctuation in his playwriting. And um, I, I, I just, uh, that foundation means a lot to me personally. And then the other one I just want to mention is the Jonah Maccabee Foundation. Uh, that is um, a personal connection to my lyricist, Rob Berliner. Uh, the Jonah Maccabee Foundation does a great job of connecting young artists with uh, Jewish education and combining the love for art and the traditions of uh, Judaism. They do a lot of great, wonderful things as well. So uh, we'll hopefully have links for you to check out both of these foundations and please um, donate, share, and, um, and, and spread the Hanukkah spirit of, of sharing and being kind and oh. offering help and, and faith in our peers when they need it the most. Mm, beautifully said. Thank you. Uh, thank you for opening up and sharing those. And it really is nice to, it's, it's why I always end the series like this and the conversations because there's so many wonderful nonprofits and charities out there that have these Whoa. rich stories that Whoa. they deserve to be told. So thank you for saying, for sharing those. Amen. And on the sharing note, why don't you share all the ways that people can find you across social media? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, first, I mean, the biggest, best thing you can do probably is to go to our YouTube page and to share our animated teaser trailer and share our uh, Light in the Dark lyric video. Uh, and But you can find that on our website, ahanukacarol.com, or if you're having a hard time spelling Hanukkah, a Christmas Carol for Jews.com. It's real. You could type it in. And uh, from there, you'll see all of our social medias. 
Um, and our TikTok also, we've got, you know, uh, we've got tens of thousands of clicks on some of these videos here. We'd love for people to engage with them, you know, create the duets. There are some people who are dubbing in their voices who are creating dances to that very song that you just heard. So uh, engage, have fun. The more, the more we can share that uh, people want to see this come to life, the more we'll have a better chance of bringing it l'chaim. Uh, and of course, uh, both of those videos are on our website where you can subscribe and be a VIP subscriber and we'll send you updates. You can also contact us directly there as well. Um, we also got a, a shout out in Broadway World and it's a press release with more information about the, the plot of our show, about some of the background of it, a lot of stuff that we talked about here, uh, just in one clean, easy to read article. Uh, so feel free to check out all of it and ask us questions because we're really excited to talk about this musical. As you can see, I have not stopped smiling in an hour. <laughs> so um, we're really we're really excited to talk about this even past Hanukkah. I know we're at the last night, but that means that we just have 365 more days to bring a Hanukkah Carol or Geltra of the musical to life. So let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I am to that. <laughs> I oh, also... Man. I, I want you to share your own personal one, but it, just a quick note. I loved your newsletter. It's so easy to like, you can subscribe. Uh, first of all, subscribing to YouTube channels. Hey, check mine out too, if you're right here already. Uh, subscribing is really helpful. And it's like, it's free. It's easy for free. you. But subscribe so to their nice. newsletter too, because they give you that like rundown. It was so exciting to see me featured on it, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah we i mean we we really like the idea of a subscriber base so that we can share with producers and investors like hey we already have this amount of people who are ready to get an email whenever we want and like yeah. um you know that type of engagement and connection is exactly what we're what we're going for as for me you can find me on instagram at haha harrison brian um let me tell you something. When I when I first realized that the first two letters of my name were ha, there was no going back. I had to do comedy. That was it for me. Um, you gotta you gotta, you gotta laugh to say my name. That's a thing. So haha ha, Harrison Bryan is my is my Instagram. You can also go to my website, harrisonbryan.com, where I've got more information on a Hanukkah Carol and the other works that I'm I'm currently in the middle of. And uh and yeah, yeah, that's 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 me. That's the show. <laughs> And I'm also the show. You can yes. find me at B-Way Show. That's B-W-A-Y-S-H-O. Like Broadway, show Shauna. You can find me across mm. social media. On my website, bwayshow.com, YouTube, B-Way Show, Instagram, and now TikTok. What? I created an account. I haven't made any videos yet, but you are inspiring me. Wait. Engage with us, show. Let's let's do it. That's amazing. I feel like we're gonna be friends now. I feel like we're friends. I I was gonna say you think we're going to be Harrison. I feel like we are. Come on now. <laughs> All right, we'll hang up and we'll light our candles together. That's what we'll have to do. Lachayim, indeed. Uh, and a few quick notes, and then anything that you wanted to say that you didn't get a chance to. But so B Way Show the podcast is now live. What what? Check it out on your favorite podcast app. And if you like it, you can subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts because you can listen wherever, but that's where the reviews matter. And the show trions, it is BYU Show Patreon. That's a great way to support your local artists. We do weekly trivia and monthly video chats. It's a fun time. Come check it out. And Slim says hi. He appreciates uh, all of you coming on the series today and watching. Uh, he felt very engaged. And maybe we can do this like Slim and show a uh, duet with your musical on TikTok. It's still, you know, I, I'm a little new to this whole TikTok scenario, but I love where it's going and I love the potential. So we're going to make it happen. <laughs> That's amazing. I've actually, I've done a duet with my cats as well with the song. It seems like you're not alone. People want to see pets. People want to see Hanukkah pets. It's true. People want to see it. So I think you got to make it happen. So this has been so fun. I could not have asked for a better end to my Hanukkah than doing this. So thank you. It's an honor. I love it. <laughs> it's
The feelings are so mutual, my friend. Thank you. So anything else that you came into today, making sure you wanted to say to all of your fans? Oh, I, I just, you know, I'm just so uh, grateful that uh, for all of the people who have shared um, uh, our material so far and who have reached out to ask uh, questions, you know, we really, we really are keeping our options open and we're excited to see where this story can be told and how many times and how many places in however many mediums it takes, we are determined to get Hanukkah Carol or Gelt Trip the wow. Musical into the homes, stages, screens of wow. every everyone we know. So help us get there and spread the word because uh, you are the Hanukkah spirits. Uh, and 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 let us let us meet at the other end of this musical with joy and laughter and love. L'chaim, indeed, spread the love, spread the cheer, and spread the videos. Amen. And stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. Yes. Spread all of that. And none. Wait for me. Don't spread any. Oh, wait. I have some good. I have a nonstop references. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Joe. This is great. This is so much fun. I, I've you, honestly Jason. had such a great hour. I really appreciate you spending your time and everyone watching at home. I appreciate y'all. I hope you have a great rest of your Hanukkah if you're celebrating or even if you're not celebrating, I hope you enjoy the festival of light. <laughs> and why stop today? You can celebrate at all times if you celebrate another holiday. I hope that brings you so much joy. Christmas, Kwanzaa, there, you know, I really should just get a list of all the holidays that are celebrated at this time. Yeah, I'll, I'll email it to you. Thank you so much. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you at the show.